Hello everyone, welcome to the video where today I am going to be taking a look at the F-89B Scorpion and the F-89D Scorpion. These are two new American Tier 5 jet aircraft which were added to War Thunder in update 1.91 and they are both interceptor aircraft which interestingly enough were designed to replace the P-61 Black Widow. In game, these are both premiums on the US aviation tree, with the F-89B costing 7,540 golden eagles, and the later F-89D costing 3,770 golden eagles. Although these are actually positioned in a similar style to the Sherman Calliope and the M26 T-99, meaning that you will have to buy the F-89B before you will then be allowed to buy the F-89D variant. Both of these vehicles have an RP efficiency of 610% and an SL efficiency of 810% when being used with premium accounts, so these will make you a decent amount of SL and RP and will likely be incredibly useful for researching any current or future tier 5 or 6 aircraft. So to start off with the F-89B, this is the earlier variant of the two, costing 7,540 golden eagles at a BR of 7.3. The vehicle has two camouflage options, with the second one costing 200 golden eagles and representing an aircraft of the Idaho Air National Guard. This and the F-89D both share the exact same fully detailed cockpit model. This will make the experience for simulator pilots quite a bit more enjoyable and just generally adds another nice layer to this aircraft. The most significant difference between this and the F-89D is the armament. Six M24A1 20mm cannons, these guns give you a 1 second burst mass of 15.15 kilograms per second, certainly enough to take down any enemy target you may come across, and when you consider that you have 1200 rounds of ammunition, you will certainly be able to grab at least a few frags per game with relative ease. You do also get access to a tracking radar system which can lock onto any enemy target within a range of 2 kilometers. although this will not give you a lead indicator. Next thing worth mentioning is the climb rate of the aeroplane. Well, it's quite big, but it does have two afterburning engines that allow you to hit a rate of climb of 49.4 meters per second effectively double the climb rate of anything else you will face. So if you play it sensibly, you will always have an altitude advantage, and if you see any enemy aircraft, you will be fairly easily able to intercept and take them down, which of course was the role of this aircraft in real life. As for turning, well, it's a big aircraft, and at higher speeds, the turning ain't bad. But I have so far gathered that a boom and zoom playstyle is by far the best way to go, especially considering how often you see aircraft such as the Horton 229, which you do not want to try turn fighting for obvious reasons. It will easily get the upper hand, and you're quite a big target, so it should have no issue shooting you down. On the other hand, if you keep your speed up and use a boom and zoom kind of playstyle, the Hortons will likely have issues dealing with you as they can't quite go as fast, so that's really the best way to go. Another tactic that works is doing head-ons. The guns, of course, are centrally mounted in the nose. They're quite easy to aim at longer ranges, which is very well suited for head-ons. Although, if you are a less experienced player, this might be something to avoid, at least when you start off with the aircraft. With that said, now let's go take a look at some games in Air RB Battles. So into our first game, facing off against the Germans, going in on a Horton 229. Now usually of course the Horton from the front or the back has a very thin profile, it's quite tricky to hit. But luckily for me, he pulls up, exposing effectively the entire top surface of his aeroplane, giving me a nice large target to hit, of which I do. Basically the entire right wing of his aircraft is gone, and that is my first kill. Next up, I head towards some 262s who are harassing a friendly fighter, and I go into a head-on with one of the 262s, get my shots off, pull out of that head-on, and he is dead. Second kill of the game. After that, I decide to extend, try and pull away, of course, with the acceleration thanks to the afterburners, extending away from the enemy is quite an easy thing to do. So after extending, I then move back towards the group of enemies, and by the time I get back to them, there's one guy left, a Horton 229. He is too busy with another friendly, an F3D, so I decide to pull up, go into the vertical, and basically come down on top of him. He attempts to pull up into a head-on. Luckily for me, I get some solid hits on that thin frontal profile, hit him where it hurts, and that is my last kill of the game. And that, in fact, was the end of the game, with three kills there, not too bad. Two of those were Hortons, of which I would regard as one of the most deadly things you will face, purely just due to that thin frontal profile, 
and their powerful 30mm cannons, they can be a bit tricky to face from time to time. Next game, we are up against the Ruskies, and I decide to dive on an unsuspecting MiG-9. Of course, using the altitude advantage I have gained since taking off from the airfield to get down onto his tail, and really, he doesn't, he doesn't really have a chance to escape. I just pumped some shots in, and he's dead. A very simple kill there, and a good start to the game. I do then see an IL-28. I decide not to engage. Um, uh, at this point, this was early on in me playing the aircraft, and I did want to be careful. I knew it was a big aeroplane, a lot of surface area for the enemy gunners to hit, and of course the IL-28 has a very powerful 23mm rear turret with two of those guns, so I didn't really want to uh, risk going too close to him. Luckily though, a MiG-9 appears in front of me. I decide to go into the head-on, so flip upside down, fire some shots, and there we go. And of course, flipping upside down, fairly good way, at least that I find, to get out of a head-on without taking any hits from the enemy. You can easily pull out downwards, and the enemy can't usually push those negative Gs quick enough to actually hit you. Next up, TU-4. Fairly deadly, I decide to take the risk and go in, and really those 620 mils, they have no issue completely shredding that TU-4, and that is him dead. And that was my last kill of the game, another 3 kill game, and another victory. Really, I'm getting some very good victories in this. I believe I did 10 games in the B variant, and 8 of those were victories. So, I would say that was a fairly decent run. So into our final game in the F-89B, starting off with an Arado. Of course, the B variant, no guns, not exactly that fast. I set him on fire, and once he's on fire, I make the decision that, you know what, he's going to be going down. It's not like he can pull up and shoot me down, because obviously he has no guns. So I decide just to leave him, let him burn, and save the ammunition. And I do get the kill, and then after that, something strange happens. Basically, my entire team dies, or lands and jays out in some cases, and I'm left to face four enemy aircraft. And I do win the game. First off, Horton 229 in a head-on. He doesn't hit me. I sort of pull out the head-on. My shots just completely riddle his aircraft with bullets. He is dead. Next up, a 262 on the runway nearer the center of the map, not their main airfield. I don't tend to like killing people on the ground, but in this situation, three enemies left. I'm the last on my team. I would like to win, so I was really just taking the easy kill. Next up, we have an Arado who just took off from the airfield, and you know, he was running away. I have quite a bit more speed than him, and I am catching fairly quickly, and luckily for me, he decides to attempt to turn, allowing me just to have a large surface area to hit, making it far more likely that I'm going to hit him, and I do, giving me my fourth kill of the game. Now, it's a 1-1 situation. It went from 1 versus 4 to 1 versus 1, and the last guy, Horton229, who had climbed all the way up to space, and, you know, I activated Blind Hunt, went after him. And, you know, I did a few passes. I then had to extend away. Of course, he's a bit more maneuverable than me. So he was outturning me. And, of course, I wasn't dogfighting. But as I went in for the boom and zoom, he would turn away so I couldn't shoot. But luckily, I did finally get the sort of head-on that I wanted. Going in, get the aircraft level, get the guns on, fire some shots in. Luckily, he doesn't hit me. And I hit him. That is him down in flames, my fifth and final kill of the game, and I would say that would be called a carry. Uh, I believe two other people got kills, I believe two people got a single kill each, and then I got five kills. And as I said at a point, it was a one versus four situation, and I pulled that back, and I only actually had to do one kill on the ground, which I'm fairly happy with. As I said, I didn't like killing that 262 on the ground, it feels kind of like you're cheating it a bit. But then again, the other four were, of course, in the air. And as you can see, I did reap a fairly decent reward from that game. First on the team, got over 30k RP, well over 100k Silver Lions. As you can see, it definitely is a fairly decent grinder for both SL and RP. Now moving on to the F-89D. This is also at a BR of 7.3 and will cost you 3,770 Golden Eagles after purchasing the previous F-89B. This also has two camouflage options, with the second one being a standard Arctic camouflage. As you can see, it's got the orange high visibility wingtips and tail section, and this will cost you 200 Golden Eagles. The major difference with this variant is that the guns have been removed in favour of rocket pods mounted in the front of the wing end tanks. These carry 104 Mighty Mouse rockets and in game these are the generic type of Mighty Mouse rockets which are used for ground attack. But in real life the F-89D used rockets with a proximity fuse so hopefully this will be adjusted in the future.
You also have the option to equip 16 HVAR rockets, which will up your overall loadout to 120 rockets, which really isn't half bad. This variant does also get a tracking radar, which will lock onto a target again within 2 kilometers. although in its current form it does not give you a lead indicator. In terms of performance, the F-89D does have more powerful engines, allowing it to be a bit faster in a straight line, although the climb rate is over 10 meters per second less due to the increased weight of those wing end rocket pods. Of course, in its current state, the best way to consistently gain RP and Silver Lions with this aircraft will be to ground pound. You certainly have enough rockets to take out either some of the bases or some light targets, so that should gain you a decent amount of RP and SL per game. On the other hand, you can use it in its historical role and try and kill enemy aircraft, which is what I tried to do. So yeah, it can be done, you can actually kill enemy aircraft with the unguided rockets, but I will say now, it is not exactly a sustainable or consistent way of gaining Silver Lions and RP with the F-89D, at least for the time being. When it eventually gets the correct proximity fuse rockets, I can see that being a fun way to play the aircraft and it being very useful in that role, so hopefully Gaijin do give it those proximity fuse rockets, I know for sure that bug reports have been submitted with the correct information, so hopefully they will take a look at that and correct uh, the inaccuracies with the aeroplane. But what you can see now is uh, effectively the way you want to be playing it if you want to gain RP and Silver Lions with its current form. Using the rockets to take out either ground targets such as light pillboxes, medium tanks, maybe artillery, AA guns, uh, or, or taking out the bases. That's what I'm doing now. So I've taken out only the 104 Mighty Mouse Rockets. You can, of course, also take the 16 HVARs. With this game, I was able to destroy pretty much two and a half bases. If I took the HVARs, I would have been able to take out all three bases without a problem. So effectively, take the HVARs, take out the bases, and in this game, I made 11,000 RP. So you can make a decent amount from doing this. Of course, you would likely make more from taking out a decent amount of ground targets. Personally, I did not try doing that due to the spacing of those rocket pods. I figured it would be a bit tricky and it's a bit easier just to whack the bases, drop some tickets from the enemy team's points, and that would be a bit more useful for my team. And as you see, all three bases taken out. And as I said, I gained 11,000 RP from that game and about 50,000 silver lions. So there we go, the F-89 B and D Scorpion, two new American Tier 5 premiums of which I have greatly enjoyed. The D variant has been fun, hopefully it does get its proximity fuse rockets because I can imagine that spamming them into a group of enemy aircraft could prove to have some very fun results, but in, at the, for the time being at least, it's fun derping around and trying to kill stuff with those rockets, and it can be fairly chilling just to sneak around, knock out some bases, go back and land, and get a bunch of RP for that. The B variant, on the other hand, absolutely insane. I will admit it is over. I wouldn't say it's. I wouldn't say it's overpowered, but it is overperforming just a little bit. So I would not be surprised if that receives a BR increase or some other kind of nerf in the near future. But it is definitely, at the current time, an absolutely amazing aircraft. Um, even I was able to get a fairly decent kill-to-death ratio with it, which, you know, I'm not the best pilot in War Thunder. I would say I'm, I'm average, but uh, even I was able to get a fairly decent KD with it, which does go to show just how good this thing is. You have six very powerful high-rate-of-fire guns, which are centrally mounted. Each gun fires 1,500 rounds per minute. You have 200 rounds. And if you are fairly conservative, fairly efficient with your bursts, you'll be able to make that last a fair while. In that 5 kill game, for example, I didn't land, I took out maximum fuel, so I almost actually ran out of fuel. But I basically used all the ammo, used everything, and I was able to get 5 kills out of that. Definitely going to show just how efficient uh, you can be with the aircraft, and how that can bring some very good results.
Anyway though, if you do not already own the F-35 Sabre, which is the other tier 5 premium for the Americans, I, if, if you're looking for something to grind out the American tree, I would advise picking this up. If you're a new player, I wouldn't say there's any reason uh, particularly to get the F-89D. In its current form, it is more of a collector's item. It is not exactly something that you need to grind the tree. The B variant is the one you want for grinding. As I said, performing absolutely brilliantly at the moment. It is worth giving a look. Anyway though, thank you very much for watching the video. If you did enjoy, please consider giving the video a like. Maybe even subscribe to the channel. I will of course have many more update 1.91 vehicle reviews coming out soon on mostly premium vehicles, but also some of the new tech tree vehicles that I've been able to grind out so far. Anyway though, thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.